So this recap will actually go back to believe last May. And in last May, the Oilers were eliminated by the Vegas Golden Knights when Connor McDavid in his post game basically said cup or bust. And it was followed up by Leon Dreisaitl. So from that moment, I've always had a belief that, yeah, if they don't get it done this year, we're, we're going to see this team dismantle and we're going to be basically on a rebuild mode um, without a cup. I can't state if that's going to happen or not after this season. Um, the salary cap's going up. But I'll tell you what, it's going to leave... If they win the cup tomorrow for both sides, for management side and for the player side, there's going to be a change of feeling. And maybe the players are willing to maybe take a bit of a haircut to stay together. Maybe management are going to be able to figure out how they can assemble a team for next year and the years to come to get us a second or third or our, well, obviously if we don't get a cup tomorrow, I think thing, a lot of things will change. So I'm going to refer to it as the second and third cups, possibly fourth or fifth. Who knows how how far it can go. But it all started on May 16th with the cup or bus comment by Connor McDavid. They go into the season with high expectations only to get a season debut blowout by the Vancouver Canucks on October 11th. And everyone in Edmonton, including myself, are going, what the f- was that? About to say it, but we all were beginning to wonder what the hell was that? Jack Campbell looked horrendous, and this would be the start of what would end up being Jack Campbell uh, being placed on waivers and playing the remainder of the season for the Condors, and us relying on Calvin Picard as a backup and Stuart Skinner as our number one, uh, and it would also lead to. What would happen next? Oh, no, sorry. October 29th, the Battle of Alberta, the Heritage Classic, the second time this event was held in Edmonton. I happened to take in the very first ever, which was the very first ever outdoor game of any sorts through a regular season. They did play a preseason outdoor game prior to 2000. I think it was 2001 when they did the first one. Um... But yeah, this was the first regular season game uh, back in 2001. And then they would rematch, and it happens to be the Battle of Alberta, which is so fitting. But at this point in time, we already started seeing a taste of what the Oilers were bringing this season. We still had a lot of concern. And I think a lot of us, I know, I remember going into this game saying, the Oilers better win at least that game. Because at that point in time, they were already had something like only three wins or two wins or something like that. Uh, But they were not playing very well. They end up winning that game, which was, thank goodness for that. However, on November 12th, the cards would fall. Woodcroft would be out. Knobloch would be in. I remember doing my episode saying, here we go again, another coaching carousel. And being disappointed because that's all I've seen in the last 12 years is two years in, out. Two years in, you're out. Two years in, you're out. Two years in, you're out. And it's been just constant, constant carousel of coaches. However, this coach would prove to be very, very different and would win over Edmonton Oilers fans very, very quickly as... In, on January 8th, he would set a NHL record being the first ever NHL coach in the history of the game to record two seven-game or more streaks in the first 25 games of his tender. Achieving that accomplishment, and I don't know, I don't know if he was in the Jack Adams conversation this time, or if they, I, I'm sure the awards have been, I can't remember who won it. I don't even think he was in the conversation, but he should have been just for that alone. An absolute stunner to do that. And one of those streaks would happen to be um, 
let me just take a look at what I wrote down here. So the two streaks he had would be uh, from November 24th to December 12th, and then the 16-game streak from December 21st to January 27th. And, of course, the Vegas Golden Knights would cut the Oilers shy of an NHL record of 18, uh, which was uh, owned by the Pittsburgh Penguins and still is owned by the Pittsburgh Penguins. But just an amazing job. At this point in time, I think Oil Nation, every Oiler fan in the world, forgot about Woodcroft pretty quick. I mean, theoretically. We go to March 24th. 2024, where Zach Hyman hits 50 goals for the first time in his career. Another remarkable and stunning event that this season has produced. On June 3rd, 2024, the Edmonton Oilers win the Western Conference uh, Western Conference championship by defeating the Dallas Stars <laughs> and moving on to play who they are playing right now, the Florida Panthers, for what we hope to witness tomorrow night, and that is the Stanley Cup winner take all tomorrow night. What a remarkable and crazy year i will never forget this year until the day i pass i mean you don't have seasons like this and to put into perspective the last time if the Oilers should win tomorrow the last time a team has ever accomplished being down three to nothing in the stanley cup final to take it all was in 1942 and it was the toronto maple leafs an absolute stunning um, a set of events, circumstances, whatever you want to word it. Oh, it's, I'm going to be a wreck again. I like I've been through the last three games. I'm going to be a nervous wreck. I just hope that the Oilers can get a healthy lead early so I can calm my nerves down um, and just kind of calm them down and but still always have it in the back burner uh, we still might lose it but just calm it a little bit down it's going to be crazy it's going to be good oiler nation you guys are in for a treat tomorrow night all of us fans are the ones that are going to be attending the game who are oiler fans you are witnessing potentially something of historic proportions i can't state that enough <laughs> 